Welcome back to today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be covering part two for what if Deku had rubber powers, aka what if Deku was Mr. Fantastic. You guys seem to enjoy the first part, and so I decided to bring you guys a part two and a double upload day. In case you guys haven't seen the other video I posted, it's a what if Deku had a teleportation quirk, so definitely make sure to go check that one out and leave a like while you're there. That said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Jumping right back into today's story, we're going to start everything off with Izuku and everybody else walking into one of their last classes of the day, Hero Training. This is when a large man would enter the classroom saying, I am here, as immediately it would be shown the All Might silhouette as everybody turns towards his direction, and from here people would start fangirling, fanboying over All Might like crazy. It would be at this moment that Izuku turning towards the direction of All Might, seeing as he hasn't actually met him or trained with him, Izuku would totally start fanboying like crazy, as from here, all Might would finally get the class to settle down and he would then tell them what his true purpose of being here is, breaking down that he's, as as you know they saw in their uh, acceptance letters, he's actually going to be one of their teachers. With them all being extremely excited, knowing that All Might was going to teach here, but not exactly knowing that All Might was going to teach here here, you know what I mean, not their classroom. They figured he was going to be teaching the third years or something, or second years, never expecting that their class was going to be the one that gets the main focus as All Might, turning to all of the students, would say, ha <laughs> right, as from here he grabs a remote and tells them all to suit up, that the clothes make the pros, and to meet him outside. Immediately everybody would do so as we get a changing montage in which all of the students come outside for the first time, and in a very cool scene they all reveal their own costumes, with the only lame one being Todoroki's, and them all eventually picking slots to see who they're all going to be fighting off against who, and what the teams are going to be for the heroes versus villains test. Now, in the original, as we know, Deku and Bakugo's relationship would have been very much so rocky, to say the least. So, in that time, Izuku would have kind of been a little bit worried for Bakugo, but since this time they're best friends, I figured that it'd be kind of a cool moment if we showed off just how good their teamwork is. So, Izuku and Bakugo are actually going to be facing off against Koda, the guy who can control animals, and... Uh, and uh, who should Koda be teamed up with? Oh yeah, let's say Koda and Kirishima. Let's say that those two are going to be the ones that they have to face off against, right? The battle would start off easily with everybody being in their own respective spots, with Izuku deciding that it would be in their best interest for Bakugo to burst in through the window, using his flame quirk to divert their attentions, as Izuku, using his stretching abilities, could go over to the top and make his way down, seeing as soon as uh, Bakugo finds the room, Izuku could would quickly make his way towards the other entrance that you know is the actual one and burst in and sneak his way towards the bomb room using his elasticity ability izuku would be able to shape his body down through the small hole that the door had and fit his entire self in through that as he would wiggle his way towards the direction of the bomb as bakugo would pretty much using his fire quirk would be able to shoot flames at the direction of uh, uh kirishima who would rush in at Bakugo trying to use his quirk to pretty much tank the attack, but seeing as this is a Kirishima who is not really that experienced would definitely begin feeling the heat. Kirishima finally having to be like like finally getting sent back by the flames and Koda trying his best to you know help out Kirishima but him knowing that he's not that much of an offensive person Koda ultimately stays back and just yields as it would be at this moment that Izuku would finally hear over the intercoms hero team wins as after this they make their way back towards the rest of the students and it would be here where they end up finding out that they did well they actually did remarkably well with one of the people who goes over and congratulates them 
being Kirishima himself as well as Invisible Girl. With him saying that they both did incredibly well themselves, that Kirishima's quirk is awesome, and Izuku would have one question for Kirishima. Is that the limit of his hardening quirk? Because Izuku feels like his quirk probably could be one of the most versatile ones. Not only should Kirishima's hardening quirk do that for him, but it should in theory give him a boosted strength, he thinks. With Kirishima wondering what Izuku means, Izuku saying, well, if he technically was to harden his muscles as well he potentially could make it to the point where they get more compact and ultimately they end up becoming two times stronger with kirishima thinking to himself that that's a possibility kirishima going to the gym that day pumping some iron and izuku asking invisible girl how she really feels about her invisible status with him asking her if she would like to potentially be able to know what she truly looks like with Izuku saying that it would be pretty cool if she was able to, you know, turn it on and off, right? With Invisible Girl saying that that would actually be awesome. Her explaining to Izuku that, but that's pretty much out of the possibilities. With Izuku saying not to doubt it, saying that anything is possible. And so, what Izuku would end up doing is telling Uraraka to write down his number, as Bro from here would go on to invite her over towards, um, towards his house right where he would end up asking her multitude of questions about her quirk and ultimately he would end up deciding that by using some of the uh technology that izuku has laying around it should be more than enough sufficient to actually do exactly what he needs eventually izuku would hit bakugo up to ask him to go buy a part and eventually izuku would end up remaking a machine eerily similar to the one that he used to enhance himself and bakugo's quirk with izuku thinking that by using this he could put potentially end up altering the genetics of her quirk and making it so that her quirk can change so that she can have more access or destroy her with Izuku hoping that it does the latter instead of the other one right and so Hagakuri would end up stepping into the machine as Izuku turns it on and after having fixed some of the bugs and learning how to contain the mutation like thing would end up finally end up only getting the radiation on Hagakuri. It would hurt her for a brief second as she would scream out in pain and once it would be over and the flashing of lights would end Izuku would rush over to Hagakuri as he would ask her if she's okay with her saying that she is. Izuku seeing what she truly looks like, as he would see green hair and like 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 these blue eyes. And Izuku, once he gets a good look at what she really looks like underneath that quirk, would literally bro, bro would literally fall in love with Izuku thinking to himself that that is his kind of girl. Bakugo entering the room, seeing Hagakure and even himself thinking that she's a looker, right? with him saying that he would have never expected her to look like that. Obviously, they knew exactly what the shape of her body was, but face and hair? They had no clue. With her saying that she didn't even know those were the color of his eyes, much less the color of her hair. Grabbing onto it as she would say, I always wondered what it would look like, as it would be more frizzy just due to the fact that she really had a hard time maintaining it due to the fact that she could never really see it. She would just kind of keep it in a ponytail most of the time, just to keep it out of her face. But for now, she would jump on top of Deku and thank him over and 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 over, and over right? As Izuku looking at her, he would notice that she pulls her phone out and texts her mom saying that she's coming home and finally they're going to get to see their, their daughter, right? As, you know, Hagakuri the next day goes to school and it would be here that they would all be informed of the USJ event being held in three days, them all being given permission slips and ultimately fast forwarding to that event with Ida, of course, being picked as class president after Ida shows his bravery in the lunch cafeteria event in which the reporters would break into UA. Ultimately, ultimately leading us to the day of the USJ in which Izuku would actually find himself inside of it as he would wonder to himself why things seem off but not being able to quite pinpoint anything Izuku wouldn't be able to say a thing. Eventually though Kurigiri would appear in the middle of everything as he teleports some students away and Hagakuri would actually be teleported over to the section in which Izuku's at right? with her actually being saved by Suyu as well, and Izuku being completely shocked at the fact that, you know, he can see her now, like, completely, like, remembering that what he did was awesome and incredible. People asking Hagakuri how she was able to turn her quirk off, and her just saying the truth, that it was Izuku. He created a machine that was able to alter her quirk, 
so that she could actually gain good access of it. And people would actually end up asking Izuku if they can get some help, with Kirishima being one of the main people who would end up asking Deku that. And so, what would pretty much end up happening is that Izuku would end up using his uh, ability to just stretch them all the way towards land. And from here, Izuku would pretty much run towards the direction of... Um, of Aizawa wanting to help, with Hagakure not wanting Izuku in danger, running after him, and Kirishima would be making his way towards that same direction, as at this moment, Bakugo and Kirishima would both be rushing over there. It would be here, where Izuku would rush over towards Aizawa with Hagakure there as well, and once the villains would begin rushing towards them, Hagakure would hold their hands out in a bit of fear, as she realized that she just put up a force field. Not only that, but she put it around Aizawa and Izuku with her wondering how in the world she did that and izuku saying that impossible like her ability to turn on and off her invisibility isn't the only thing that she ended up gaining she also ended up gaining the ability to create like barriers that's awesome and so izuku asked her to take it down as he and aizawa would end up rushing the villains taking them down with hagakuri providing assistance and barriers for herself as to not get involved with the fight ultimately what ends up happening is um what's it called ultimately what ended up happening is that shigaraki would get angry as he would begin scratching at his neck screeching no 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 nomu kill the brat as from here the nomu would blitz at the direction of you know invisible girl and it doing so invisible girl would put up a barrier which the nomu would punch and invisible girl would stop it with her barrier to her surprise as it would crack and she would concentrate trying to fix the bubble but the nomu would punch at it once more izuku noticing that she was in danger would try to rush in but that's when kirishima would come flying in and pretty much end up trying to tackle the nomu setting it flying back slightly as izuku from here ends up lunging in the way and pretty much stretching all over the nomu restraining it with his ability as kirishima was just about to get punched and and Izuku would say, go, get out of here now. With Kirishima nodding and ultimately Aizawa using his erasure quirk on the Nomu as eventually All Might bust through the door revealing himself and then showing that he is indeed there, right? As it would be here that All Might begins facing off against the Nomu who would actually have his abilities restrained quite a lot due to Izuku still holding the Nomu's arms and legs in place and so All Might would have to be careful as to where he punches but due to the fact that Izuku's made out of rubber it wouldn't actually hurt him if we're gonna be honest and so what would pretty much end up happening is uh, Bakugo finally ends up coming in and pretty much noticing that Kurigiri was about to give All Might some trouble would shoot his flames at Kurigiri, Kurigiri having to dodge and ultimately a Bakugo versus Kurigiri fight going down as Izuku would form a gigantic arm hammer thing as he and All Might would both hit the Nomu at the same time sending the Nomu crashing out of the building in a team rocket type style as Izuku would simply watch as the Nomu would get sent out of the building and Shigaraki would watch as he would say kirigiri get me out of here with izuku saying not so fast stretching over towards the direction of shigaraki as you know it would be at this point that shigaraki would smirk thinking to himself that he can finally you know take care of the kid himself going over to try to grab him with all five fingers as bakugo would end up pretty much shooting flames at the direction of kirigiri telling izuku to stay away and izuku would do so as he would realize that Shigaraki was trying to grab onto him with his hands, right? Noticing this, Izuku would jump back as he would be close to grabbing Izuku and Invisible Girl would form a barrier, with Izuku turning back towards her direction, smirking, and then forming a gigantic, like, axe with, like, swords and stuff like, 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 like a ball with needles all over it, right? As he would then throw it at the direction of Shigaraki and Shigaraki would absolutely get pult pelted by this as it sends him back flying and and from here, everybody would finally turn their attentions towards Kuragiri. As the entire League of Villains, the main people, would actually end up being taken out, Kuragiri not being able to help his master out, and Shigaraki being taken into custody, with all for one being heavily disappointed in him, thinking that he needs a new successor. Kuragiri, however, definitely needs to be broken out. And so there is going to be a Tartarus jailbreaking arc that's going to be taking place off screen and they ultimately take care and pretty much end up taking Kuragiri back. However, 
Shigaraki would be very disappointed to note that he pretty much ended up not being taken back and when all for one pulled up and Shigaraki saw him he would have thought master you finally came as all for one walks over to him and just rips the quirk decay out of Shigaraki's possession taking it back and leaving Shigaraki there to deal with the cops who would have ultimately pulled up and shot Shigaraki leaving him for dead as Shigaraki would have been taken care and out of the series way earlier than you guys would probably be expecting. With this not even being the end of it and another villain that we would have seen in the movies coming into the canon of the story by the name of Wolfram or Dr. Doom. But that's neither here nor there. That said though, continuing on the story, after the events of the USJ, they would all have about one week of break as pretty much what would end up going down is they end up finding themselves in the UA Sports Festival much sooner than they would have in canon, with Deku noting during this one week off that he definitely needs to get into contact with Kirishima. Kirishima put his life on the line in that moment and Izuku noted one thing for sure, that he Kirishima, Bakugo, and Invisible Girl worked very well together, thinking to himself that maybe the four of them could potentially form a sort of uh, sort of a bond that could potentially help them all out and benefit each one of them during the sports festival that he knew was going to be coming up, due to the fact that he's smart and he definitely keeps up with this kind of information, being on par with Nezu levels of, of intelligence at this point, if not way more, due to the fact that he is very, very adept with technology and stuff like that right and so what would pretty much end up happening is during their time off izuku would pay, basically get caught looking at hagakuri a bunch of times seeing as they hung out together and trained and everybody would kind of take notice that izuku is definitely crushing on her one thing that would be of definite note would be that hagakuri seems to share those same feelings for izuku and it would be kind of a mutual thing if only that could actually happen in real life y'all but regardless one thing that would be taken note of is that Hagakuri, who would end up pretty much being there, you know, being with Deku and Deku, you know, flirting her up and them both kind of sort of establishing a bit of a relationship, one person would be left out in the dark. That being Uraraka, who would kind of just have to watch in a little bit of dismay, seeing as like she would just watch as her crush kind of just was swooped off of his feet by, uh, you know, Hagakuri and she can't do anything or Invisible Girl. So she learns to live with it, ends up getting a crush on someone else, that being Katsuki Bakugo. And we continue the story with them all in the UA festival. Izuku would have actually ended up being the one who was tasked with giving the speech and he would do so magnificently. With Izuku being the winner of course, he would be the one who would have to give the speech and he would do so great, leading them into the race portion of the UA Sports Festival as Midnight would immediately blow the starting pistol and all of them would make their way towards the finish line. Izuku using his stretching ability to pretty much jump over the zero pointer, forming a gigantic fist as he would punch straight through it and then going on to use something similar to Luffy's gear fourth seeing as he is made of rubber and he could technically do it seeing as his organs are as well he's able to actually use the ability of you know gear second right where he like like enhances his stats due to the fact that the blood flow can like go crazy right and so because of this Izuku would be able to keep up with the with the people who are towards the front but ultimately Izuku would end up getting like fifth place or something like that due to the fact that there was other people who were definitely capable of passing him and of course Deku would still get the idea of the landmines but this time he doesn't have any platform with him to give him access to that and seeing as fire is one of those things that could definitely harm Izuku seeing as he is rubber he's not going to be taking his chances too much I mean it has to be really high concentrated levels of heat not just normal heat because heat it just like makes the rubber kind of hard to control, but he can still control it nonetheless. That said, the next event would be announced as a cavalry battle, and we all know who the team is going to be comprised of. Kirishima, uh, Hagakure, and Bakugo, who would all be in the winning team, and they would end up keeping the 1 million point headband, seeing as Bakugo would have been the one who came in first place, then being able to stay away from everybody else due to the fact that Hagakure was able to put up a shield at that last moment before Bakugo was going to rip that, I mean, before Todoroki was going to be ripping their headband away from their team. Her playing a big IQ move at the very end and saving all of them with her intellect that she would have displayed at the very, very end. 
That said though, continuing the story, we would find ourselves in the 1v1 bracket hall as Todoroki would walk over towards Izuku and tell him that he's going to crush him, Bakugo, and everybody else that he's been working with since the beginning of the, of the festival, with everybody wondering to themselves why it is that they're all a big group, and Izuku would say that they just work together, with Bakugo saying, yeah, they're the Fantastic Four, and Deku thinking that that name, that name definitely sticks. Uraraka would end up noting that that nade actually suits them very well, and ultimately Izuku would make his way towards the combat portion, where Izuku would note that his first opponent is going to be Shinso. Now what would pretty much end up going down is that Izuku taking note of Ojiro's warning would definitely make sure not to say a word to Shinso, simply blitzing over towards his direction and using his fist to lunge it back in a gum gum fist type of move as he punches Shinso right off of the stage, and ultimately Izuku would be a announced as the winner, with the intercom going, Izuku Midoriya, winner, and from here, Izuku would make his way back towards the stage, where he would eventually end up telling Hagakuri good luck, with her saying, thanks, and from here, her kissing Izuku on the cheek, saying, you did great yourself, I figured you needed a little prize, with Izuku beat red, and bro passing out into straight up unconsciousness.